Hey guys, what is up? Happy Thursday. So I just have a couple of announcements here. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone um, knows that every single week they should be checking the featured section. Um, there's never a week that goes by that someone either messages me or messages support and said, hey, I didn't know about something. Everything that you're going to need to know every single week is going to be posted inside the featured section. I do this to make it as easy as possible so that you guys can stay on top of everything that's going on. Um, like just this past week, we had the Cash Now campaign blitz. I brought my mentor, Nick Peterson, in um, because a lot of people said, hey, I need some cash flow for the holidays. And so I hooked you guys up. Um, so anyway, every single week, make sure you're checking the featured section. This is something that I just added um, a couple of weeks ago. It is an in case you missed it post. And so every single week, as a matter of fact, this video is going to go underneath the in case you missed it for this week. Um, I'm going to post every single thing that you need to know. So you can see here last week, I actually said, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing this cash now blitz. Here's the link. Here's the uh, replay from the last ask little thread, and here is the workshop that we did with Onyx and Gal. By the way, if you have not watched this, make sure because it is super super important. I am gonna be putting this training inside the portal, um, but for now, it is underneath the in case you missed it post for this week. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be replacing this one with the new one. So just wanted to make you guys aware of the feature section. Make sure that you're looking for it every single week. Some of you guys might, it might look like this with a carousel. Um, some of you guys might have to click it here. Okay. Depending on whether you're looking at mobile desktop or on an iPad. Okay. Now make sure if you have not watched this video right here. Um, we do have some new rules here in the Facebook group, and this is just to ensure that everyone is doing everything that they that they need to do in order to reach their goals, okay? So I'm going to go straight into the Ask Laurel thread. I am traveling, so I apologize, but I'm just going to go right into it. Make sure that you are reading all of the rules on how to get questions answered. It has everything that you need to know in on how to actually get help from me. Also, if you go into the actual training portal and watch this video, step one, watch this video on how the program works, I actually walk you through how to actually use the program and how to get personalized help, okay? So make sure you're just slowing down. I know you're anxious to get through the content, but just make sure you're slowing down because a lot of you guys are missing a lot of really cool stuff, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do these in the order that they were submitted. Leslie says, hey, Laurel, I have a brick and mortar business for lash extensions, brow waxing and tenting. Last week, you advised me to run one of my three to four minute power content videos combined with a value bomb to personally invite people to my place of business and run them together for my $300 budget. However, this is the value bomb that I have. I have, but it is more informational and titled 10 reasons why your lash extensions could be causing you discomfort. I've attached it below so you can look at it. I'm wanting to run one of my three to four power content videos with this value bomb like you advised me to do so I can stay within my budget. However, the three to four minute power content videos I'm currently running right now, my hold rate is now 6% and cost per 25% view is 26 cents. I'm not really getting messenger conversations, mostly spam that's just costing me money. And when I do get a real conversation, I screw up the sale. So I'm struggling because I've already spent 320 of my current budget for all of the videos, $500, please help. So this doesn't really say a lot, right? Lash discomfort, 10 reasons your lashes are costing you. So I would say that this this graphic, and, and I'm pretty sure that this is probably you, and there's not, not necessarily anything wrong with the way that you look or anything like that. I would just say like if people are looking for lash extension or whatever, this is not the photo that I would be using. Like if you, if, if the, the, your value bomb says lash discomfort, 10 reasons your lashes are causing your, you irritation. I would probably have lashes and like irritated eyes or something like this. Um, that's going to actually, um, get people, get more of your ideal client's attention. Um, because your business is lash extensions. And so they want to see lash extensions. That's going to get their attention. I would also be doing, you know, videos of, lash extensions going on, lash extensions going off. Um, I would probably do something that's a little bit more visually appealing. And so what I would do is I would do one power content video that fits the brick and mortar, um, one of the brick and mortar um, scripts right here, right? Power content. 
Now here's the thing, I would also do some of these 20 Reels ideas um, so that you can actually give away something too. Um, so if you were offering, you know, this, this freebie, actually, you know, you, you could actually say, hey, download this, this, this free guide, right? But you need to, you need to make it valuable, right? So, la so I would do like one or two of the main reasons that lashes are causing you irritation and maybe do a value bomb of how to fix it. You get what I'm saying? And so this, this, this is like something that people are probably like, well, I could probably Google that or whatever, but if you make it a little bit more engaging, and that's the whole game here with social media, is we have to be engaging. And this just doesn't say engaging. And so I would, again, I would pick the gap. I would probably do the gap um, or the what to expect um, for your one, because remember, you wanna run $5 um, a day for power content, and then you would probably wanna do one of these Reels videos um, for brick and mortar. Um, and again, I would, I would give in, in your 60 second reels video, I would probably say, here's the number one reason that most lashes are causing you irritation. Give that one reason and be like, Hey, there are nine other reasons that be could be causing your irritation. Drop a line below this video. And I will not only give you this guide, but I will personally help you figure out what's going on and how you can get the best lashes in name of town, right? That's what I would do. Let's see, Sergio says, hey Laurel, I'm about to launch some power content videos targeting Latin American coaches, consultants, and service providers. Was wondering if I should target multiple countries, for example, Costa Rica, Mexico, Colombia, or just start with one country. If I used Costa Rica and Russell Brunson, the target size is about 3,000 people. If I use Costa Rica and Russell Amy Porterfield, I get around 30,000. So should I open it up to more countries or use multiple interests just for Costa Rica to get, I would say test this, right? It's all about testing. Um, I don't know. Until you actually test this stuff, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but if I were doing this, I would definitely stack more interest. Um, but here's the thing. If you're launching power content videos, 3,000 people is plenty. Um, but I would probably stack more interest. I would probably do stuff like lead generation, email marketing. I would probably go, if I'm just gonna target Costa Rica, I'm probably gonna go for more broad interest like digital marketing, um, email marketing and stuff like that. If you're trying to get coaches, consultants and service providers, I probably would stay clear of um, too targeted because Costa Rica is so small. But you never really know until you test, right? And because power content, are pennies on the dollar for video view campaigns, I think an audience size of 3,000 would be fine. You're just gonna go through it a lot faster. Let's see, Adam says, I would love if Laurel had some thoughts on my recent post here, copy below, or it could possibly be included in Ask Laurel. Good day, I'm Adam from Australia. I'm a newbie here and I'm really getting some excellent value from the program. Well, thank you. I own a small e-commerce print on demand website that sells a low ticket digital product, custom pet movie posters for pet lovers, similar to pet portraits, but with a bit more fun and pizzazz. It's a low ticket item, $29.95. Um, it's personalized and, and great keepsake or gift idea, and I know the furry friend owner's market can be huge. Over the past two weeks, I've spent more money than I care to admit on Meta, Google, Pinterest conversion campaigns for USA that resulted in minimum sales, three totaling around 250. I have since paused all campaigns. I would like to think I hit with good creative and copy, but I'm now realizing I've only been getting sales from that cold two to three percent audience Laurel speaks of. I've almost completed the training and getting my head around the ads ecosystem. I know I've only given a brief intro to my business. However, here's my question. I understand my product doesn't necessarily solve a problem. It's more of a nice to have, not a must have. How would you best approach advertising my product? So I'm, I'm not sure, but you should, you don't say here, but you should watch this e-commerce training because I actually show you guys how to actually put together an e-commerce funnel because you're going to have to create a funnel for this. It's not just about getting people to buy this because you will not be profitable if you're just selling this single item. You need to have an e-commerce funnel that's going to up the cart value. Otherwise, you're always gonna be upside down. It's, it, you're, probably, you're probably not doing much wrong other than you're not using a proper funnel to increase that cart value. So I would recommend watching this ads for e-commerce so that you can see how you would build a funnel around this because this would not be the, the item that I would actually be promoting via the ads. I would probably um, be promoting something that is a little bit less like, you know, a custom sticker or something like that. Like I love my pug or something like that. Um, I know it's pet portraits, but I, I would be doing something like, you know, 
that get these like 99 cent stickers or something that's like I you know pug mom on board or something like that and do a free plus shipping offer with this as the upsell and I don't want to get too much into it because I explain it here inside this training but happy to have you Adam um, let's see, how do we go about pitching in the DMs? I've done the training videos and still need some guidance. For reference, I'm a holistic nutritional, nutritionist specialized in PCOS, and I help women with PCOS get pregnant. I understand and agree that we need to lead with value, ask questions, but is there a point where we say something like, based on your goal of and everything you've come through so far, you'd be a perfect fit? Would you like more info? Um, no, I would not do it this way. I would literally follow the training that I have. And I know you said you watched the training, but this, the way that you asked this question tells me that you missed something super important in the training because there is a certain flow that you guys need to be doing this. And so my recommendation would be to watch this training and then submit how you are having those messenger conversations and then I can actually help you a little bit better. But this training right here has everything that you need in order to be able to um, lead these conversations. Because the way that you asked this question tells me that there's something that you're missing from this training. And so I wanna make sure that I'm guiding you in the right direction. Let's see, Christina says, hey Laurel, can you please audit my power offer below and suggest what to improve? It's not working well. After running for 1.5 weeks, I've only had four leads on the lead form ads. Need to call them to see if they book a call and nobody booked a call directly from the ad. The ad is doing directly to going to my calendar booking page. So I expect some parents to be interested now that school has started and first test and low grades are showing up. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how I can improve it to get people to book a call from the ad. Thank you very much, awesome. So here's the thing. I would need to know the the metrics from this, right? I like I can I can read this, but I need to know what your what your CTR all is and what your link click through is. Because here's the thing. I if you give me the right data, I could actually help you figure this out because I don't know, you haven't told me are you getting enough people to stop the scroll, right? That's going to be CTR all. Um, if you watch this training right here on how to troubleshoot your ads, um, I need that data here so that I can help you properly troubleshoot this um, because I need to know exactly where people are falling off in the ad. So the metrics that I need to know are CTR all and CTR link click through um, because otherwise, and I need to know um, how many how many clicks that you had to this calendar because here's the thing your ad might not be the issue it might actually be the um, the page that you're sending people to and the reason that I'm giving Christina this advice is because here's the thing the worst thing that I can do is assume that the issue is this ad right because what if I told Christina to go and change this ad but the problem isn't actually the ad and it's actually with her application or booking page, right? And so the worst thing that I can do is try to diagnose this without knowing what the actual issue is. Just be, because copy is just perspective, it's from my own perspective, right? Because if I look at this, I'm like, this actually looks pretty good. And so my, I would wanna know one, how much have you spent What's the CTR all and all of that fun stuff? Um, and like I said, I would go through this uh, troubleshooting training um, right here just so that you can grab me the, 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 um, the KPIs for this. Um, because I hate, hate, hate um, having to diagnose this without knowing the numbers, right? Because it's all about data. The data will tell us what's wrong here. Let's see, Imran says, um, oh, one, one other thing before I go here. Um, it says, and nobody booked a call directly from the ad. Now remember, people might still book calls not directly from the ad. They might reach out to you in Messenger, they might. And so that's one of the, that's one of the things too, is just keep in mind with this ecosystem, you might not have you know people actually book calls from the ad, but if you're getting more people reaching out, if you're having more conversations, they could, this ad could very well be working really well. Um, but until I look at the data that's inside the ads manager, um, again, I can't properly diagnose that. 
how long are we running the problem solver ad? I just launched it and we'll be on day tomorrow. Hey there, you should watch the training on optimizing your first uh, flywheel right here. So don't forget guys, you need to be moving through the training. So once you have all of your ads running, you should watch this video. And if you have a low budget, you should watch this video. So make sure that you're actually moving through the training and just not stopping um, because this is, this is inside the training. But super happy that you're here. Um, I just wanna make sure that you saw this, uh, this training right here because it will answer this question. Okay, William says, hey Laurel, I'm currently testing a six minute VSL ad that goes straight to booking page. The booking page is an embedded calumny form above the fold with testimonials under. My question for you today is, I'm trying to test if this can convert to cold traffic. I'm testing at $10 a day right now with a campaign objective set to conversions and the conversion event is view content. No, you want to set it to schedule. Now I'm wondering, would it be better to run the ad with video views of, no. You need to run it as a lead ad set to schedule and make sure that when people book a call, it fires the schedule standard event, okay? And that should be underneath the high ticket offer validation right here. So you see how it says um, way to accomplish this conversion campaign set to schedule right here. And I also talk about it here in this uh, Easily. in this in this video right here. Let's see. Bobby says, "Hey, I do live five day launches into a high ticket offer. I have an email list of about one thousand of qualified leads, a dead Facebook group with about two thousand. These are people who registered for previous launches, but didn't, but many didn't attend. I want to do another launch." Since the program been running power content ads to a 1% lookalike of my email list and have about 5,000 and have seen 25% videos, what phase should I start with? How can I create an ecosystem that brings me qualified leads at a great cost in my next launch? I want to bring in warm and cold leads. I would start, if you're, if you're wanting to build your audience, I would start with phase one because phase one is all about building that invisible list. And building your invisible list is key to being able to launch to a freaking hungry and audience that actually trusts you. So phase one is where I would start if you're going to build. And I will say this, Bobby, um, I've done launches for Amy Porterfield. I've done launches with Joel Irway. I've done launches with a lot of people in our industry and all of them before launching, we always run phase one in order to warm up the audience because it makes the launch so much more successful and it gets more people to actually join the launch. Let's see, Kimberly says, hey Laurel, I'm a gym owner and we're moving to a bigger unit. I plan to go live and show behind the scenes content as well as doing before and afters as we're developing the space, but we don't get access until October. Any suggestions for teaser content coming up at this point? Absolutely. I would be showing behind the scenes of this thing being built or of you moving um, any equipment or anything like that. So I will say this, there is a woman in this program, her name is Pam, and she is one of my, um, Pam Chavez, and she was a health and nutrition coach and she was with me for since the very beginning and she learned the entire power content structure and she decided to have a change in her life and she moved to Corpus Christi, Texas and opened up a pizza joint and every single day while they were building the pizza joint, as they were getting ready for it to open, while they were, you know, tasting recipes and pizza sauce and all of this, she was going live and doing behind the scenes content. And guess what? The day that they launched, they launched it to a, a packed pizza shop because she was literally, she took her audience on a journey, right? Like, this is why I love my phase one strategy so much is because we're basically taking people on a journey. So even if you're someone who's, you know, whether you have a brick and mortar business or you're building a digital business, phase one is such an amazing opportunity for you to take people on the journey with you because then they become invested, right? And then once people become invested, they're like, I'm gonna, I, I need to go on day one and work with Kimberly, you know? So that's what I would be doing. Um, you said, I've been sharing updates about contract signings, big things happening. A yes, absolutely. I would, I would be doing that. And then I would be saying, hey, today we're doing workouts outside because guess what? The gym's not ready yet, but because the gym's not ready doesn't mean that we're not going to do our workout today. So let's go, right? I would, that's, that's the way that I would position that every single day until it's opened. 
Let's see, Greg. Haven't seen Greg in a while. Welcome back, Craig. Greg. Um, hey, Laurel, I had my account disabled on Facebook, which is really strange to me. Maybe is a common occurrence to you, but I'm at a loss as to what I have done wrong. Oh, <laughs> Greg, you're, it, it happens all the time, um, and n none of us ever knows what, what goes on. Um, so, let's see, the thing that is so strange to me is I've been running the same power offers and power content for almost a year, and I've changed nothing as they have been working. Not sure if you need more information, but Manisha's target NDIS disability service providers in Australia. Oh, yeah, I would get on with support and keep doing it. And make sure that you are creating all of your backup accounts so that when it does happen, and it happens to everybody, don't worry, Greg, you're not being singled out. Um, that's just something that just, it comes along with running the whole Facebook ads. And so that's why we need to be creating a backup account. We need to have a backup business manager. We need to have someone, whether it's a wife or a spouse, create a business manager under their account too because there's different levels of getting restricted. Let's see, here it just says um, this ad account and its ads are... Um... So what we wanna do is we wanna actually do things in a certain order, right? And this goes for everyone who's listening right now. So he got his ad account shut down, right? What I would do is I would not have my back my backup account in the same business manager because if he launches an ad and that ad gets rejected, he might get his entire business manager shut down. We do not want a business manager shut down because that's even harder to get back than an ad account shut down. And so Greg, what I would do is I would have a spouse or a business partner open up another business manager that's under their profile and add you as a partner on that so that you can run ads from their business manager. And I would run power content, okay? Now I would make sure and review the rules in your niche just one more time ju for just in case you may have broken something that they might have recently changed because Facebook changes policy all the time. One of the things that I do is I run all of my scripts through ChatGPT and I say, hey, is this breaking any of Facebook's um, compliance issues? And it'll tell me, hey, yes, you need to change this or whatnot. But that is exactly the precautions that I would take right there. And every single day I would hop on Facebook chat support through the business manager and I would keep asking for help until someone helps you because sometimes you get a good person, sometimes you don't, but be persistent. Keep requesting for a review, keep emailing the support person, um, and more importantly, when Facebook calls you, you know how everyone gets handed a Facebook rep? They may not be the best at giving a strategy, but in times like this, they are super, super valuable with helping you get your account back. Let's see, Kevin says, hey Laurel, I boosted an Instagram post for weight loss lead magnet that is getting me around eight messages a day. Awesome, 92 messages over 11 days in my inbox. Once I have them in Messenger, I'm getting a lot of back and forth conversations, which is great. My main goal is to get them on a call and then to sign up for my high ticket coaching program. I booked two calls for, for so far, one sale. Hell yeah, Kevin, freaking amazing. For all of the others that don't want to book a call, should I be offering them a low ticket product to get them into my world and become buyers? I absolutely would. I absolutely would be downselling them into something or some type of downsell them into a free challenge where they can spend some time with you. Um, that's why I like doing my blitzes um, because it gives me a chance to spend time with a lot of you guys who may not be ready for my next step program, Lean on Laurel. And so the Blitz gives me a chance to actually spend time with you guys. And so I would recommend something like a boot camp or something to where you could downsell them or even, and when I say downsell, it doesn't have to be something that's paid. It could also be a free challenge and weight, like challenges work so incredibly well for weight loss. But Kevin, I just want to say good job on getting this stuff done. This is amazing. Two booked calls and one sale. So that is amazing. So he got 92 messages to get one sale. Now he's got some data, right? Now he knows that he needs to get better at transitioning some of these messages to calls. But here's the thing, right now, Kevin knows I have to talk to 92 people in order to get one sale, right? So we're starting to see that data. And uh, Kevin's only 11 days in. So I'm gonna give you a virtual high five, Kevin. There you go. Let's see, Saran says, hey Laurel, I launched my ads but I didn't get a single like or comment on my post, but my ad manager shows 100 post engagements happen. Also, I didn't single messenger. Am I doing anything wrong? Not necessarily, but make sure you're doing this optimization. Um, also, Facebook is going to show engagement. So 
post engagement doesn't only count if people like or comment. It's also whenever they click the see more button or engage with your posts in any way. So people might just be clicking down to see the see more and reading more of your text and not doing anything else. But a lot of you guys are missing the optimization part of this program. So please, please, please make sure. Um, and, and one of the things that I want you guys to, uh, to keep in mind, okay, is it took me over 200 ads to get the 12 bangers that I've got now that have grown my business past 3 million, okay? This is an ever growing thing. You can't just expect to hit a home run with the first 10 ads. It's not going to happen, guys. Like I said, it took me over 200. As a matter of fact, the last time I counted for one of my Lean on Laurel students, I had launched over 273 ads just to get people into the $7 program, right? And so it is all about volume. Most of you guys are not doing enough volume. A lot of you guys are not doing enough frequency. You're doing one or two and three things you need to test more. That is the game. That is the game. If you guys want to play, you got to test more. If you guys have any questions at all, drop them in the next Ask World thread. I'll be putting that up on Monday. I will see you guys in the Facebook group.